Good morning, everybody. Come on, if you don't mind, let's just stand on those feet and make some noise for Jesus. Come on, everybody, just clap, 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 clap. Take a moment and take your seats and turn your attention towards the screen. Summer is just around the corner, and that means it's almost youth camp season. Church of God Youth Camp has been making an impact in kids' and students' lives for generations, and here at Palmetto Street, we want to see that continue for generations to come. Our kids and students are gearing up to go to youth camp, and we want to send every one of our kids and students to youth camp that can possibly go, but we need your help. Today in the lobby, you'll find cards where you can sponsor a child to go to youth camp. Those cards are numbered 1 through 150. Take that card home, pray about it, and write on that card what you feel like the Lord would lead you to donate and bring that donation back to us. If you feel led to donate more 
than the card that you draw that says $2, then donate more than $2. If you feel led to donate the full 150 on the 150 card that you draw, then donate 150. We just want to send kids to youth camp and we want you to partner with us in that endeavor. Church of God Youth Camp has made an impact in my life. I was saved at Church of God Youth Camp, called into ministry at Youth Camp. It allowed me to connect with God and to connect with my friends. And so you can have a part in not just impacting a child's life today, but making an eternal impact in a child or student's life by sending them to youth camp this year. So take a card home, pray about it, bring that donation back to us. Let's send our kids to youth camp and pray and believe God for an incredible youth camp season. Or youth camp season. Man, we are excited about youth camp that's happening this summer. Um, these are the cars that also mentioned in the video. They are out front at the table. Um, we've been doing this campaign for several years now in order to send kids to camp. And last year, um, we sent 94 kids to camp last year. Um, and so it's an incredible number, the largest number that we've ever sent at Palmetto Street. All 94 of those went because um, of your giving in this campaign. Uh, they went at no cost to them or their families. And so we're doing this campaign starting it now. Uh, we're in youth camp season of uh, payments and early birds and things like that. So uh, we want uh, this campaign to start today. It will go on for a few weeks. And so if you didn't come prepared today, you still got a few weeks for it. Um, if you give online, it's simply the tab under the donate, thing, donate tab that says uh, youth camp sponsorship. And if you pick up one of these cards, all the instructions are on the back. It's easy for you to give. Um, if you write a tithe envelope, just write out Youth Camp Sponsorship. Um, but we appreciate you and your donations to that uh, campaign today and in the weeks to come. Uh, sent 94 last year. Expe expect to send over 100 this year. Um, it's just been an incredible time and an incredible increase in sending kids to camp. So thank you so much for that. If you have a kid that goes to camp, that wants to go to camp, there's another card you can pick up out there. It looks like this, and it has instructions on the back of how you sign your kid up to camp and to become a part of this uh, sponsorship program as well. Um, so just pick up one of these if you're sending a kid to camp, or you can pick up both. If you send a kid and you want to give to the campaign, you can pick one of those up as well. Um, and so thank you so much for being a part of that. Uh, a few announcements for you before we stand up and greet one another. Uh, next Sunday, or actually next Tuesday, on April 22nd, we have our senior luncheon at 11 o'clock. Uh, be sure to come out for a great time of fellowship and always wonderful food. And on April 28th, we have two things happening. The first is uh, water baptism. Um, we've had a lot of requests. Even over the last several months, we've baptized so many different people each month. We have baptisms happening again on April 28th. So if you know somebody or you yourself would like to be baptized, that's happening on April 28th. Be sure to call the church office or sign up on the church center app. And then also our next men's golf outing is happening on April 28th as well. You can sign up on the Church Center app or talk to myself or John Mark about that. Get more information. Also, they're watching online. I want to welcome them uh, and welcome their new addition to the family, Joel and Lacey, our middle school pastors. They had their baby on Friday. And so we love y'all. We're watching. We're, we're celebrating with you. Um, and then... Uh, as always, as custom here, we want you guys to greet one another. So if you would just take two minutes out of your time while we greet more people online, you can stand up and greet one another around you and uh, we'll get ready to worship in just a second.
once again, we want to welcome everybody that's watching online from all over the United States and elsewhere. Thank you guys so much for joining us on Facebook, YouTube, or our website. Let us know in the comments where you're watching, and remember to share this service as well. If the ushers would, come get prepared to serve the congregation. Thank you so much for your giving. Um, obviously, today, the emphasis is on this youth camp uh, sponsorship fund. Um, you can put that on the envelope online, however you like to give that. Be sure to pick up a card on your way out, and uh, we thank you for that as well. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we love you. God, we praise you. We thank you for everything you're going to do in this house, all the lives that will be changed and all the lives that will be touched by entering your presence today. God, I pray that we walk out the doors differently than the way that we came in just because we sensed your presence for the time that we're here. God, we pr thank you so much for the challenging word that is going to be brought forth. God, we thank you for the fellowship that we feel already in this house. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name.
Let's raise it up. Everybody sing. Echo it in this place real loud. Sing no. We sing no. God, we echo your authority. One more time, say. We sing no. God, we echo your can I hear y'all say it last time? Sing no! your victory in this place you were given a name that's above every name your words state that at the mention of your name every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that you are Lord we speak victory in this place if you don't mind can you just stretch your hands into the atmosphere for a moment that great name I dare you to speak Jesus over every situation speak Jesus over every situation nothing is too hard for our God we speak Jesus we speak Jesus we speak Jesus this morning
So shout Jesus from the mountains And Jesus in the streets And Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Oh, and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus
call your name, Jesus. Demons tremble at that name, Jesus. Come on, whatever you're dealing with, just call his name, call his name. We say Jesus. We say Jesus. There's something about that name, amen? The name of Jesus, it changes every situation. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, Jesus' name changes every situation, amen? 
You excited to be in God's house today? I know I'm excited. I'm a little bit nervous. As you can see, I am not Neil Nolan, okay? I am not him, but I am glad to be here in his presence. Um, Neil is under the weather today. You know him, that he would never give up this opportunity to share the gospel. And uh, so for him to give it up so quickly and so freely, you know that he is uh, extremely sick. So we're going to lift him up in prayer in just a few minutes. We also have a few people or a couple of people that are having some major surgeries this week. So we're going to lift him up in prayer as well. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you today. God, we give you all the praise. God, I pray, Lord, that you will bless this time. God, that you will anoint us. God, that you will speak through us. God, that you would inhabit this house. God, that you would be with us today. God, I pray, Lord, for our pastor. God, you know he is struggling. God, you know the need. God, we ask, we pray, and we believe that you're going to do something great in his life. And we give you all the praise for that. God, I pray, Lord, for those that are having surgeries this week. God, as, 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 as bad as the situation may seem, God, your presence, God, can change everything. God, we're depending on you. We're calling on your holy name. God, we believe in healing. God, in Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen. 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 Now turn to your neighbor and say, I know he's not Neil, but he's much better looking. <laughs> and then you can be seated. Amen. Amen. My good friend, Neil Nolan, he's such a blessing. I tell you, I love to hear him preach. Thank you, David. I love to hear him preach. Um, I'm really jealous of how he just flows so easily. Like he, he walks up here and, and man, he's just ready. He's just going 90 miles an hour. And I know I've been sitting beside him and he's on the phone. He's texting pastors. He's talking to people. He's usually talking to Aiden. Aiden's calling to explain why he's late. Aiden didn't have anybody to call today. So bless his heart. Pray for him as well. But, but, but then he just flows right into it. And I'm so jealous of that. That is not my strength. Um, he, is, he is good at exhorting the body and lifting everybody up. Um, and me, I, I just ramble. So I'm rambling so I'm going to get down to it. I'm going to get down to it. But we believe in his power. The name of Jesus Christ is the name above all names. So we're going to believe and pray for healing today uh, for those that, that need healing. We're going to pray for victory today for those of us in this room that need victory over something. Amen? It's simple. The name of Jesus, it makes it so simple. It makes things so simple. And um, the title of my message today, believe it or not, is The Simple Life. It's the simple life. And um, if you know anything about me, you will know that I'm the simple preacher. I get to the point. We're not going to go off on different tangents. This is not going to be theologically challenging today. It's going to be simple. But the interesting thing is when I, after I preached this morning, a lady uh, came up to, to me, and I'm not going to say how many years, but it was a lot of years she said she'd been coming to church, and she had never heard that scripture preached and I said, that's because it's so simple. Everybody wants to be complicated. I want to be simple. I want things simple. I remember simple life. I mean, who remembers like only having one phone in your whole house that you had to share with everybody? All right, I'm, I'm talking to the older ones. I'll get to the young guys in a little bit. Just hang with me. Um, there's no telling what you guys are going to be talking about 50 years from now. But I remembered uh, I was so far out in the country, we had to share a line. We had a party line with our neighbor. I don't know if anybody's ever had that before. You pick up your phone to call and someone else is talking. Um, but uh, so we had to do that. Thank you, Rodney. He's such a blessing. Every week you bless me and you've already started today. Amen. God is good. So, um, but I remember that. I remember the busy signal. Who remembers getting a busy signal? Now we just can mash a button and we can just send you straight to voicemail. I don't even have to listen to you. I can just slide it over and you go to voicemail. Who remembers before computers, before Google, before AI, um, before all these things? I remember um, looking forward to getting the mail. Uh, you know, now it's all junk. Uh, they don't even send bills anymore. They just email them. They find you through the web. But I remembered uh, writing love letters to Shannon um, when I was at the, the police academy. We had just started dating, and, um, and I went to the police academy. And so I would write letters and mail them and beat them home. I could beat the mail home. <laughs> I remember we had one phone on the hall. So there was, there was a phone at the end of the hall 
There's probably 60 guys on that hall. And the way we got to know each other at night was we would sit in that hall in a row. And that's the order you got to use the phone. And so they would call, collect. Who knows what that is? Call and collect. That's where the person receiving the call had to pay. That was interesting. No, I don't accept. And then you hear a dial tone. That call was over. I remember the simple time when everyone looked after your children. I remember my friend's parents were not afraid to spank me at any moment if I was bad. Then they would call my mom and tell my mom that they had to spank me. And then my mom would spank me, not for what I did, but because somebody else called her. I remember those times. I remember when they told mama when I was bad, and I remember when they told mama that I was good. Those were few and far between, but I do remember. I remember that if you didn't work, you didn't eat. I remember that a lot of people worked all day. They would work hard all day just to be able to put something on the table at night. I remember gas being a dollar a gallon. Um, I remember stores being closed on Sunday. You better get it on Saturday. You was out of luck on Sunday. That store was closed. It was locked up tight. Everybody was home with their families. I remember TV went off at midnight. They played the Star Spangled Banner, and that was a wrap. It was over. It was static. It went to static. Could you imagine today if the internet went off at midnight? Huh? What kind of world? We, we would be in a panic if the world... Somebody asked me after the early service that they thought I was going to talk about outhouses. And I said, I'm not that old now. I'm not that old. We had plumbing. All the way in Fork, South Carolina, we had plumbing, at least at my house. We have all the knowledge in the world in a box on our desk at our fingertips. All the knowledge, everything we could possibly want to know. And each and every day I sit at my desk and I yell at that box and I threaten to throw it in the yard because it's not doing what I want it to do. You know, that's, I miss the simple things. I miss those things. And now in this world we live in now, we always want more. We're never satisfied. We're always after more. We're always after something faster and better. We want it right now. We don't want to wait. We go to a restaurant and go through the drive through and there's too many cars. We just go on down to the next. We settle for less than what we really wanted because we're in such a hurry to get what we really want. And, and, and we're so, so distraught with the world, we're not satisfied with what this world has to offer, but that's okay because we're not designed to be in this world. We're not designed to live here. This world isn't designed for us. It's our home. We're passing through it. I remember a player named Deion Sanders. He was a player that had everything, fame, money, popularity, ability. He was, he was one of the best, one of the greatest of all time. But he, he's a coach now, and, he'll, and he talks all the time about God, and he'll say that, that he had all those things, but there was always something missing. He always felt like there was something missing, and it was God in his life, and he admits to that now. And it's, it's amazing. We take, take things in life so complicated, and God wants to make it so simple for us, but we struggle. We struggle. God has given us a simple world, a simple word, so we won't get bogged down, but we always seem to bog down. Problem is, as much as we want the simple life, even when God has made it so simple, somehow we find a way to make it so complicated. So I'm going to share a quick word with you. Um, it's from Matthew 7, and it is so simple. It is so simple, but hopefully it'll, 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 it'll bless you. It says this, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks, it will be open. It's so simple. Ask, seek, knock. We make it so complicated. We make things so complicated. The word says this, and later on in Matthew says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? You make it so simple. He makes it so simple. We make it so complicated. I remember um, praying uh, for my daughter. Who's a, who's a girl dad in here? A few girl dads, a couple of us, yep. So I remembered um, when I got saved, Carrie was already, she wasn't a teenager, but she was older. And, and so, you know, you, you, start, you start 
praying about things. And I remember praying for her future husband. Uh, I, someone said, you know, you need to be praying. So I said, okay, that sounds smart. I'll start praying, you know. Um, and, and so I, I started praying and, and just simple things. Lord, I, I want him to be a, a good man. Um, a good husband, a good father that'll respect her. It's got a, a good job because she's spoiled and she's going to need income. Um, you know, I, I remember praying for those things. And, um, and you know, it's funny, but no, I was serious. He needs a good job. He did need a good job. Um, but I remember praying for those things. But I also remember leaving some things out that were very specific that I should have prayed for, like being a Carolina fan. I left that out. I didn't think God cared, but he cares because he's laughing to this day. I have to drive to Clemson, South Carolina to see my grandchildren. That hurts my heart. I mean, that hurts. The only good thing about it is they got tiger paws all in the street and I can just drive over them and skip my tires. Um, so that's the, only, that's the only good thing about it. You know, and I, they don't have cameras, so I'm good, I'm good there so far. Hadn't, hadn't got any tickets or anything. But you got you to ask God. It's, it's so simple. We miss it. He says, ask. That's all he says is ask. And we make it so complicated. We, we don't want to ask. We don't want to go before God. We don't, we don't want to take our time to ask. And, and there's so many reasons we don't do it. And one of them is we're not willing to wait. We're not willing to wait on the answer. You know, how, how difficult is that when you know, when you ask, I mean, I've been asking for the winning lottery number since they had a lottery. I have been waiting patiently on the Lord. But how many of us are willing to wait? How many of us are willing? I, re- I remembered um, when, uh, when we got married, Shannon, Shannon's family, all of them went to church. They went to church all the time. I was like, I don't understand why y'all go all the time. I listened this morning. I don't need to go back tonight. I've already heard it. I don't need that. But, but they, went, they went to church all the time and, and just great people, wonderful people. Um, but as, we, as our marriage went along, we were, we were changing the bed sheets one day. I was helping. I was being a good husband, helping change the sheets. And there was um, a prayer cloth pinned to my pillow. Um, and, um, and so we, we, I saw it. I was like putting my pillowcase on. I saw it. And she saw that I saw it. So we was like, made that look. And she was like, she didn't say it, but she was like, what you going to do about it? (laughs) And I was like, nothing, honey. I ain't doing nothing. But I I remembered I had an opportunity to take it off my pillow. I mean, I could have taken that prayer. I knew what it was. I knew exactly what it was. I didn't didn't, uh, profess to be a Christian, but I knew enough to know that's a prayer cloth. Her and her grandmama and her aunts and her mama, they all praying for my soul. And so here's my opportunity. I can take this off. I can be done with this. I chose, I said, I'm going to leave this alone. I chose wisely. I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to leave the Lord alone. Let him do what he wants to do. And so many times when we ask and we're not willing to wait, we, we want our answer right then. We, we want the genie in the bottle. We want, it, we want it right then and right there. But that prayer cloth was, was her heart. That was, that was her prayers. And if she wouldn't be willing to wait, this prayer cloth wouldn't have any value today. Wouldn't have any meaning today. I remember when I, when I gave my heart to the Lord, when I got home, I took this prayer cloth off my pillow. I didn't need it anymore. But I still kept it. It's in my Bible to this day. I, I got it out for this message, and, and the Bible cover won't even, won't even hold the, the letters in, the words in anymore. But this is where it stays. This is where it stays. It's, it's got value to me. It was, it was something worth waiting on, waiting on the answer. And so many times we're not willing to wait. God says sometimes this happens right away, but sometimes you got to wait. You got to be willing to wait and trust God for the answer. You got to be willing to trust him that he's going to make things work out. There's a scripture that says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Now, I looked up the word supplication. I'm a simple guy. And you know what it is? It says the act of supplicating. (laughs) That helped you a lot, didn't it? That was that box on my desk. Dictionary.com. Supplication. The act of supplicating. I could have thrown it out the window right then. I could have got rid of it. But it followed that up. It's a humble prayer. A petition to God. The act of supplication. 
with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. He wants to hear from us. He, kn he knows the answer. He knows your heart, but he still wants to hear from us. That's part of our relationship. That's part of what we have going on. Recently, my, um, my granddaughter turned uh, one year old in December, and, um, and she was born uh, and had to stay a few days in, in the ICU. She had a heart issue, and, um, and so we, we'd kind of known for a long time that, that there were some things going on in her body. And so she had a, a cardiologist from day one. She had a cardiologist, which still amazes me. And, um, and so we knew we kind of had steps. You know, they kind of had a, a plan lined up for what was going to take place. But it was something to be praying about. So we were all praying. All of our family are, are, are believe in prayer. Uh, Seth's family, all of them believe in prayer. We were, we were all praying. Um, and in November of last year, they, um, they did a heart cath on her. And um, they were hoping to fix everything through the heart cath, but, but they weren't able to. And I remember Carrie, she, they, they were the surgeon that did the heart cath, he, he never came out to get us. It was a long procedure. It was supposed to be like an hour. And you guys know how that is. It gets your nerves all messed up. And, and, uh, and so Carrie and Seth finally went back to meet with the doctor, and um, she came out crying. And, um, and so we knew. We knew, we knew the answer right then. To what, you know, we didn't have to ask or really talk about it. Um, but it, but it hurt, you know, so, so I, I, I know what you, I know what you're going through when you, when your answer is no, or when your answer is wait a little longer, or when your answer is, is not right now. I, I know what you, I know what you're going through. I, I understand that a little bit. Um, but it, but it still hurts. You know, it was, it was a moment that hurt. It was a moment that, that me being the pastor and the father and the grandfather, the, the minister, but I didn't have the words to say. There were, there were no words. There was, there was nothing. And, and so we, we gathered around and, and, um, and just started, you know, praying and just, you know, just, just trying to come together as a family and realize she was going to have to have open heart surgery and that, you know, doctors are amazing. They do amazing things. And, and we were just going to have to trust. And I uh, remember we finished and there was a lady that, uh, bless her heart, she was trying to find a quiet place to have lunch. And she came into our waiting area <laughs> and, um, and, you know, we were all up in arms and, and praying out loud and everything. And after we prayed, she said, um, I don't want to get in your business and I don't know what's going on, but the Lord said everything's going to be all right. And it's amazing how God uh, put people in your path to give you a good word at a time when you need it most. And so, you, but you, but you got to talk to God. You got to ask God. You got to, you got to have the relationship. You got to understand What's going on? And, and so many times, you know, I, I, remember, I remember praying and, um, and I remember thinking to myself, you know, I would pray, Lord, bring healing. I would pray, I would say all the right things that you're supposed to say. And then I would say, um, Lord, let your will be done. And I said that a few times and I said, wait a minute, I want my will to be done. I got a little selfish. And I said, I understand your will, God, and I'll accept your will, but I'm going to pray for what I want. We got to pray. We got to ask God. You got to ask for what you want. You got to ask him. Don't, don't be afraid to ask him for what you want. He's, he's sovereign. He knows what's best, but don't be afraid to ask for what you want. Don't be afraid to ask. I remembered um, a lot of times we, uh, we don't ask because of the answer. It might be no. So we don't ask. And I know that uh, when someone tells you no, it hurts. Now, believe it or not, when I was in high school, when I would ask some girls out on a date, sometimes they said no. Now, I know, I know you can't believe it either. It shocks me to this day. To this day, it hurts. So I know, I know what it means when you, when you hear no. I remember there was this girl, good, good Christian girl. That was probably the issue right there. She was, she was on one group of people and I was on the opposite. I was the, the person her dad was praying against. Don't let that boy come around my house. Um, but, um, but I remembered I had the biggest crush on her. It was my junior year. I was going into the summer, and I knew that I had to make some changes in my life. I was already bad. I was already bad as a junior. Um, and so I knew I had to make changes. I knew I had to do some things different. So I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. So they didn't have social media, so there was no way to track my activities back then. Um, but the word of mouth was a powerful tool. Amen. Um, 
You know, it might be one phone, but it would ring and people would talk. <laughs> and so, um, so I knew I had to, I had to, I had to be good. So, um, so I was good. I just worked, kept my head down. I had a friend that lived in an, another town called Mullins nearby. He lived on the river. Every day after work, I'd go straight to his house and we would, we would water ski. We would float down the river in the inner tubes. I mean, we were living like Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. It was the greatest, greatest summer ever. Um, and I remembered it just being nice. It was just nice. And I got back to school and I was so excited. I had been good all summer. Nobody has said my name about nothing. No parties. They ain't seen me no parties. They probably thought I was dead and gone. They hadn't seen nothing. My name was nowhere. Nobody was saying anything. And I was so excited to tell this girl I'd been good all summer. I mean, I was excited. And I said, do you want to go out after the football game? You know, football season started that week. I was excited. She was like, no. I said, God, I've done everything. I've done everything right. The answer was still no. It still hurts to this day. But without the no, without the no, there will be no Shannon. Now, without the no, there will be no Carrie. There will be no Cal. There will be no AJ. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be the same. You know, so there's, sometimes we got to accept the no for what it is and move on and, and understand that God's got something for us. God's got a different plan. He's got something else lined up for us. That girl married a preacher, by the way. <laughs> so did Shannon. Just not right then. Just not right then. I was late. I was late to the party. A lot of times we don't ask because we feel unworthy. You know, we don't, I don't feel worthy, God. I don't, I don't feel worthy of, of what I'm asking for. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough for what I'm asking for. Shannon shared a devotion with me um, uh, recently that says this. We hesitate because we doubt ourselves and our ability to discern the will of God. Y'all knew I didn't write that at all, didn't you? We hesitate because we doubt ourselves and our ability to discern the will of God. So it causes us to hesitate, causes us to slow down. Uh, sometimes God's answer is no, but I'm boldly praying for a yes. So I'm praying hard for healing. I'm praying hard for a yes. I'm praying hard, and then the answer comes, and it's no or it's wait. And so, so I, I, I get hung up in that. It makes me feel like I'm out of tune with what God is doing. It makes me feel unworthy, makes me feel out of tune, makes me feel out of sync. And that causes doubt, causes a lack of faith. And I slow down. I slow down on what I'm asking for. I slow down on what I want from God. And it'll lead to not asking at all, not even asking at all. Don't, don't let the answer intimidate you. Whatever the answer may be, don't let it intimidate you. Don't let it, don't let it cause you to back up. Don't let it cause you to, to give up on God. Keep, keep pressing in no matter how long it takes. No matter how long it takes. I was, um, I, I worked with the police department for a long time. And, uh, and you see, and I, I was in a long conversation with the lady this week about, about homelessness. And, uh, and I remembered, I don't, I, don't, I don't really have like a date or anything like that, anything special, but, but I, I know how my mind works and it's not quite right, but it's close enough. Um, but I remembered like, you know, you see someone asking for food on, on the side of the road and sometimes your mind reflect like how they got there, you know? And so my mind thinks like, okay, what if that was me? You know, what if that was me and I had to hold the sign and I had to, and I had to ask for the food and, um, you know, how would I, how would I handle that? And the first thing I thought of was I'm going to all them people at church and they're going to give me something to eat one day, each day, somebody's going to feed me. I know it. I believe it. But no, you, you start, you start thinking about it. You, you put yourself in that person's position and say, how did they get there? You know, what happened? You know, what, what bad decision did they make? What? person did them wrong and caused them to, to stumble into this situation and my mind starts playing these scenarios but the reality of it is this if it was me in that situation the only thing that would be going through my mind is I'm hungry I'm hungry that person's not thinking about his life he's not thinking about his life choices he might think about that later on that night but he's not thinking about it when he's hungry you ever been hungry you're not thinking about anything but how are you going to eat how am I going to eat? What am I going to eat? 
We're so blessed, we, we don't think about these things. But think about it for a minute. If you're hungry, the only thing you're thinking about is I need something to eat. The Bible tells us this in Mark 10, there was a blind man. And he was on the road begging. He was on the road begging. And Jesus, the disciples came through and he was crying out to Jesus, have mercy on me. And the disciples were trying to tell him to be quiet. They were trying to tell him to stop talking. They were trying to silence him, but he was persistent. He was persistent in calling out the name of Jesus. And finally, Jesus came to him and he said, what do you want? And he said, I want my sight. I want my sight. I want to see. That's the only thing that mattered was he wanted to see. And for us, we make it so complicated on the things that we want. But what do you want in your life? Do you just need to see? Then just ask to be able to see. If you just are hungry, ask to be fed through his power, through his anointing, through his word. That's all you've got to do is asked, but we make it so complicated. It's such a simple life, but we make it so complicated. The next thing he says is this, to seek. So what are you seeking? What are you hungry for? What do you desire the most? What do you desire the most? I remember um, getting saved. It's been 21 years now, or 20 years, 21 years. And, and I remember um, afterwards, I thought that was it. That's a wrap. I did it. I'm going to heaven. Case closed. I'm not guilty. You know, that's, that's how I looked at it. I finally, everything that Shannon's been praying for has finally come to pass and it's over. No more prayer cloths. You know, I, I don't have to go to church anymore. I'm saved, you know, but I was wrong. I was wrong. There's so much more. There's so much more. And so as I begin to journey, begin to read my Bible and begin to pray, begin to ask, um, the Holy Spirit came up. Being filled with the Holy Spirit was, was something uh, that, that just came up. And I had a pastor, Pastor Adam, if he's listening, he, he pushed me all the time uh, to be a better Christian. And, um, and he pushed me to pray for the Holy Spirit. He said, you know, I, I understand this, you know, just, just pray, just pray about it. Don't let it scare you. Just pray about it. And, uh, and so I remember praying about it. And it was a long process because I wasn't sure. I was hesitant. I had a, you know, just a lot of things going on in my mind. Um, but I was persistent. I did continue to pray. I did continue to pray and ask God. And, um, and it didn't happen how I thought it was going to happen. It, it, it didn't work like I thought it was going to work. But, but God, God revealed himself to me. And I'm thankful to this day that I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. So I, I didn't give up. So I'm encouraging you, whatever you're asking of God, whatever you're seeking, whatever it is, don't give up. Don't give up. God's saying, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will heal their land. It makes it so simple, man. When you start reading, really reading this, it's simple. You know, we get caught up in, in all these other things and these other thoughts, but it's simple. Simple. There was a story in the Bible of a, of a widow woman, and she kept going to this judge, um, and, uh, and she, she wanted justice. So she was going to this judge, and, and for whatever reason, he, he didn't hear her. He didn't hear her voice. He didn't, he didn't answer her. He didn't, he didn't do anything. Um, but after a while, I say after a while, after a while, her persistence her persistence paid off. This is what the judge said. Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. In other words, she nagged that man. She aggravated him and she nagged him until he answered her and did what she wanted. And sometimes that's how we got to be. We got to, Jesus needs to sometimes say, John Mark, I've heard enough. Now stop this nonsense. He got to stop me because I want to be the one that aggravates him. I'm sure I do in other ways. But, but we got to be persistent. We got to be persistent. Don't, don't, don't uh, give up on what you're asking for. Don't give up on what you're seeking. Trust God. Trust him. But don't give up on it. Don't give up on, on what you're looking for. Matthew 6 and 33 says this. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. We don't seek because we're afraid of what we'll find. We're afraid of being filled with the Spirit. We're afraid of being closer to God. 
We're afraid of losing friends. We're afraid of losing status. We're afraid of all these things. And it causes us to, 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 to watch ourselves and watch what we ask for. But God's not like that. He wants to give you more. He wants to do great things in your life. We've got to trust in him and, and be persistent. And, um, and, and always, always seek what he wants for our life. The last thing is this, knock. It says knock. You've got to make a move, okay? You've you, you got to make a move. Knocking requires physical action, okay? This isn't sitting in your seat talking to God. This isn't in your prayer closet talking to God, begging God. No, knocking requires you to get up and go to where you want to be and knock on the door, you got to do something. You got to get up. You got to do better. You got to live better. You got to you got to do something in your life. How hard are you knocking? And are you willing to break down the door? Are you willing to break down the door? So, my other life, I was a policeman, and by far the greatest enjoyment of being a policeman was being in a car chase. I'm telling you, that was exhilarating. That was exhilarating. There's I see one policeman in the back. Um, probably some others. But anyway, I, that was so exciting. I mean, that was heart pounding. I mean, your heart was pounding. The chase was on. You're going through. The lights are going. The siren's going. I mean, it was, it was magical. I mean, it was, it was awesome. <laughs> and, um, but the next best thing, the next best thing was a search warrant. So a search warrant is whatever we're looking for is in that house or that building. We're coming in. All right, we are coming in. And so we would sneak up, knock politely, and say, police, search warrant. Very firm, authoritative voice. If there was no answer, and a quick answer, the battering ram was knocking that door off the hinges. We were coming in, guns out, everybody on the ground, police, search warrant. That was amazing, too. That was amazing, too. We were coming in. And sometimes we got to have that, that same mentality. You know, it's, it's scary sometimes. You don't, you don't know what's behind the door, but you got you to have that mentality. That's, that's the door that the Lord has led me to. I'm going to knock on this door, and I'm coming in one way or the other. That's, that's the kind of mentality you got to have. You got you to be willing. You got to be willing. And I know it's scary. You, don't, you can't, see behind, can't see behind the door. We don't knock because we're afraid of what's back there. There's a closer relationship with God behind that door. That's what's behind the door. Something that's going to draw you closer. Wait for what's behind the door. But what we do is we end up with a game show mentality. All right, I, I can't think of the name of this show, but for whatever reason, Friday morning, I'm walking through the house, and I decide to sit down. The news was on earlier, but now there's a game show. It's like maybe deal or no deal. Does that sound right? Anybody watch the game shows? Anyway, this was Friday. Um, and there was a lady, and uh, she came up, and she, um, they offered her like $1,000 in the envelope right away. And, um, and so I'm thinking, girl, take that money. I mean, you ain't did nothing. You was in your seat, and now you're on the stage with $1,000. She's like, no, I want what's behind the door. She wanted what was behind the door. So they kept the money, and they opened the door, and there, behold, was not a new car. It was a home gym. And you could see her face. She did not want the home gym. <laughs> she did not want that. That is not what she wanted. And so she told them that um, her, her house was, was too small. She couldn't take the gym. So the guy, I guess, was trying to be, you know, good game show, build the audience up or whatever. And so he offered her another option where she could win a trip for like $10,000 to Spain or something like that. And, um, and so she gambled, she gave up the thousand dollars, gave up the home gym, valued at $3,000. I do remember that. It was nice. And she went for the trip and she left with nothing. She left with nothing. She left with nothing. The guy behind her left with a new car. So many times we, we, we're looking at the door. We, we don't want we don't want the, the gym. We don't want the washing machine. We want the new car. But the reality is sometimes we need the washing machine. 
Sometimes we're, we're dirty, we're, we're filthy. There's things that's got to be changed about us. And, and so when we're knocking on the door and when we're looking for what we want and, and we think it's the new car, but the reality is God knows what you need and you need to be cleaned up sometimes first. You know, you need, to, you, need to, you need to have something else first, and then you'll be ready for the new car. Then you'll be ready for the new home, the new job. Whatever it is that you're searching for, then you'll be ready. Then you'll be ready. Jesus said this, I stand at the door and knock. And I understand this statement was, was for the church at the time. He wasn't talking to an individual. He was, he was speaking to the church as a whole. But the reality is sometimes we have to clean our, ourself up first before he can do anything in the church. You know, sometimes, sometimes we got to look in the mirror. You know, sometimes, sometimes we got we to look at Jesus on the outside and say, God, come in. Revelations 3 and 20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. The pastor's been preaching for, for months now come sit with me. You know, come sit with me. It's a great message. It's been a great series. I would have loved to have continued that same thought, but, but this is what the Lord gave me. So we're going we're gonna to do what he says. It challenges us each week to go outside of our comfort zone and, and, and minister to someone else, someone that's different. It's a challenging thought. It's a challenging series. But Revelation says, Jesus is knocking on the door. He says, Jesus is knocking. He's trying to get into our life. I mean, he's trying to do something in, in us, in you and me. He's, he's trying to do something. Are we listening? Are we, are we watching for opportunities? Are we asking people to come and sit with us? I mean, are we, are we literally doing what the Word's been asking us to do? I love what Jesus says next. He says, if you open the door, I will come in and dine with you. I mean, he's going to sit with you, Jesus. He wants to come in and sit with you. It's not you asking someone else. It's Jesus. I want to come and sit down with you. I want to come in and spend time with you. That's, that's the God that we serve. He's personal like that. So when he says ask, he means ask. He wants to hear from you. When he says seek, he means to look, to seek. What do you desire? When he says to knock, don't be afraid to get up and do something. Don't be afraid to, to, to get up and, and, and try something different, to knock on the door. We have taken the, the Christian life that's meant to be so simple, and somehow we've made it so complicated. Different theologies, and this church believes this, and that church believes that. We were saying earlier, just speak his name. We, we sang that, and y'all were worshiping. His name is sufficient. It's not, it's not anything that's complicated. So I just want to ask, do you want the simple life? Is that what you want? As everybody stands this morning, we get ready to close. Jesus made things so simple. I talked with, with Brian, our drummer, right before the, the first service. We were, just, we were just talking, and he was like, you're preaching? I said, I said yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm preaching. I said, it's going to be simple. It's going to be simple. Maybe the simplest thing I've ever preached. And Brian said, we know Jesus kept it simple. Yeah, Brian, he's got that, you get high pitched on you sometimes. He said, Jesus kept it simple. He said, he taught in them parables, but it was always simple. And I was like, Brian, that is literally in my notes. Exactly what you just said. Jesus may have spoken in parables, but each parable ended with a simple truth. He said, follow me. That's so simple. He said, seek my face. He said, call my name, the name of Jesus. He said, let your light shine. He kept it so simple. Love the Lord your God. Love your neighbor. Keep my commands. Do unto others. With God, all things are possible. He keeps it simple. All things are possible. Nothing is off the table with God. All things are possible. Do not judge. Do not worry. And then my favorite is this. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. It's so simple. It's so simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever, he didn't break it down to any kind of barriers. He just said, whoever, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. Matthew ends in this, 7 and 8. 
for everyone who asks receives he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be open keeps it so simple so let's pray this morning father so many times the world tries to make things so complicated for us god but your word when we really look at it god it's just simple it's just simple you want to hear from us God, you want to hear from us. You want to see our desires when we we begin to seek your presence and seek the things of the kingdom. God, you want to know our heart when we're willing to to stand up and and take a stand or willing to stand up and and pursue something, God. You want to see that for yourself, God, and we make it so complicated. God, we get bogged down into things around us, God, and the world around us. God, we get so distracted. God, but your word keeps it simple, keeps it real. God, if we seek you, God, we'll find you. God, if we ask, we'll receive. God, if we knock, it will be open. God, there's so many people here, God, I I don't know what they need. God, I have no way of knowing, but I know this. If they ask you into your heart, God, you will forgive them. God, you will be their Savior. And God, for that, we're most grateful, God. So if there's one here that needs you, God, I pray, Lord, that they pray that prayer today, God, just asking you into their heart. God, if there's someone here, God, that wants to seek more, God, that wants a deeper relationship, God, that you would, Lord, help them and guide them and lead them, God, that you would put people in their path, God, that would be mentors to them, God, and help them along their journey. God, if there's someone here, God, that needs something, God, or they're knocking on the door, God, they need victory, God, they need healing, God, they need purpose, they need hope, whatever that door is, God, Lord, I pray, God, that you'll open the right door, God, that you'll lead them in the right place. God, we give you all the praise for that. In Jesus' name, we all said amen. So I don't know where you are, but there's someone here that needs to know the Lord. This is, this is your moment. This is simple. This is simple. All you got to do is ask. All you got to do is ask, God, come into my life. God, forgive me of my sins. It's that easy. So I want to pray with you. If you're willing, I would love for you to come to this altar and let me pray with you. If someone's here that, that needs to seek the Lord, they need something from the Lord, whatever it may be, maybe you want a deeper relationship, maybe Maybe you're called to ministry and you want to you see what's going on. You want to see how that works. Maybe you're at a door of opportunity. Maybe it's a new job. Maybe it's a, a career. Maybe it's a relationship and you're not sure what it is. All you got to do is knock. God will open the right door. He will open the right door, but you got to trust in Him and believe in Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anyone want to come and pray? Before we dismiss, we're not going to keep you long. Please tell the pastor when you see him that I went over time. I did not go under. So he'll be proud. So he'll be proud of me. But, but we love him. Let's pray for him. Pray for those that are having surgery this week. It's so good to see each of you as you leave. Make sure you tell everyone that the best looking pastor was here today. Amen. Amen. Love you guys.